want to thank you for joining me tonight here at uh, Pastor Clint's online gathering for just a few minutes. Uh, I know you're, you're, you're going through it just like everybody else is with this pandemic, having to, to sort of keep that separation and families like to get together and, and we'd love to be able to get back together in the church where we can rub shoulders and shake hands and hug one another, but it's impossible right now. But I don't believe it's going to be much longer before we'll be back at church and that'll be a blessing. But we don't want to forget uh, this time that we're in now. Although it's a difficult time, it can be proven. It can be proved to be a blessed time for us because we'll appreciate what we have, the freedom we have, and being able to go back to church and and sing and and uh, hear the preaching and and all that goes on. Uh, we should appreciate uh, things a little bit better when we get when we get back. <clears throat> Here on Harker's Island, we're trying to uh, to bridge that gap between church and our parishioners. We're we're holding every Sunday. Uh, a drive-in service, a drive-in service. I really hadn't had never heard of such a thing until uh, uh, this pandemic hit and uh, transmitting uh, the service. Uh, we do it outdoors at the Methodist Church here on Harker's Island. Pastor uh, Lee is so great, gracious to uh, to sort of be an integral part of this and allow us to use his, his parking lot. Um, people come in, they drive in, and they turn the radio on, and they listen to, to the Word of God, and they listen to whatever's going on. It's been a blessing to many. I think it was someone saved last week, and uh, that's worth it all. That's what we're doing. We're not doing that to get people to the Methodist Church or the Pentecostal Church or the uh, Grace Holiness Church or the Baptist Church or our church or Pastor Paul's church. We're trying to get them to Jesus, get the gospel. Paul said that the gospel was the power of God into salvation. So if we keep preaching the gospel, that is the need of the hour. And the Lord seems to be blessing it. We really having a having a good good time. I hope uh, if you're if you're around Harker's Island, I hope you come and visit us. We'll be going again this Sunday, something a little bit different, uh, special. So don't 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 leave this Sunday out. You you'll be sorry you missed it. So uh, tell tell everybody you can to come. Encourage. If you got somebody that's kind of uh, away from the Lord or, or drifting or just don't know him, get it, get them under the sound of the gospel. God has a way to touch hearts. He really does. We sing a song sometimes in church, uh, and sometimes special singers sing it, and you'll recognize it. It's called, It Is Well With My Soul. There was uh, one of our people at my church gave me a book that explained how certain songs came about, about the the uh, the writer and what they were going through and things that they were experiencing, and um, and I want to I want to share uh, this to you tonight about this this uh, this beautiful beautiful song. It is well with my soul. Um, see, I might have to check my notes here because I'll uh, I'll forget it if I don't. All right. Maybe I should quote some of it for you first. When peace like a river attendeth my soul, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet Though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. My soul, of oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh, my soul. For me, be it Christ, be it Christ, hence to live. If Jordan above me should roll, no pang shall be mine, for in death as in life, thou wilt whisper thy peace to my soul. But Lord, tis for thee, for thy coming we wait. The sky, not the grave, is our goal. Our trump of the angel, O voice of the Lord, 
blessed hope, blessed rest of my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. I want to tell you that the circumstances that led to the writing of this hymn, there was a lot of pain and anguish and sorrow that brought him to this place. And if he could say it is well, it is well with my soul, after I tell you this story, you may have heard it before. We realize that that phrase, it is well with my soul, was taken from the story in the book of Second Kings. When the prophet Elisha was serving as God's spokesman for the people of Israel. Whenever Elisha was in the town of Shunem, he would stay in the home of a man and, a, and his wife that had no children. The woman was deeply distressed that she was unable to bear children. In that culture, it was a shame for them not to have children. Elisha promised, promised to her that God would give her her wish. God would give her a child. And so it happened, and she bare a son. However, when the child was older, he became ill, and he died. Of course, the mother was greatly grieved over the death of her son. Then word came to Elisha about that little boy's death. He rushed to comfort this lady during this time of sorrow. Elisha sent his messenger ahead to ask her, Is it well with thy son? Is it well with thy son? He'd already died. And she said, It is well with him. It is well. No, how do you think that she was able to do that? Because she had a faith in the God of Elisha that he was going to fulfill that that he had promised. Though her sorrows and the son was dead, yet by faith she said, it is well. It is well. Now this hymn that we just read to you and we're talking about was written in 1873. It was by, from a lawyer in Chicago named Horatio Spafford. He was fairly well known in Chicago for his business endeavors, but also for his benevolent giving to the work of the Lord and to the evangelist Dwight L. Moody. So this was a while ago. You might think that it would be easy for a rich man, successful man from Chicago, a lawyer, to write a song entitled as well, My Soul, since he had plenty of money, had a nice family, but I want you to listen what happened. In 1870, Spafford's only son died of scarlet fever at the age of four. Can you imagine losing a son at the age of four from sickness? A year later came the great Chicago fire and Spafford, who was heavily invested in real estate in that area and on the shores of Lake Michigan, lost all of his holdings to the fire. Now here he's lost his son. Here he's lost his holdings to this fire. Aware of the toll that these disasters had taken on the family, Mr. Spafford decided that he would get them sort of out of the location for a while and take a holiday to England. It would be good for the family to get away. Not only did they need the rest, but Dwight L. Moody needed the help. He was traveling around Britain with one of the greatest evangelists of our time. And that, of course, was Dwight L. Moody. Moody. He planned to join him late that year. And so Spafford traveled to New York in November from where they were to catch a steamship and cross the Atlantic to England. Just before they were to set sail, last-minute business development 
force papers to, to have to attend to that business and send his family. He said, look, I don't want to mess your vacation up, your holiday up. I'm, you go on and I'll come just as quick as I can. So his family boarded that ship and headed across the ocean. On November the 2nd, 1873, their ship collided with another ship and sank. 226 people lost their lives on that ship. Spaffords, three sons, died. His wife survived. Mr. Spaffords, got the call of this tragic accident. He got on the ship and headed toward his wife to console her. The captain of that boat, when he got to the place where that ship had gone down and his family had been lost, he told him, he said, this is the spot. Didn't know if you'd want to know, but this is the spot where that boat went down. Spaver's heart dropped. He went to his cabin, fell on his knees, talked to the Lord for a while, and then he began to pen the words to this song. Spaver, how could you do that? Losing your family, losing everything you had, and still saying, it is well with my soul. Where did that strength come from? Where did that kind of faith come from? Listen to the words. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole. Now listen to this next phrase. Is nailed to the cross is nailed to the cross. When all around us gives way and the blocks are knocked out from under us, if you're right with God and your sin has been nailed to the cross, then you can look up and find that strength that you will need to carry you through any situation. To know that our sins are forgiven brings great comfort brings great comfort. If we confess our sins, the Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. You see how simple it is. Listen to what he says in that seventh. My sin, oh, the bliss of that glorious thought. My sin, not in part. God takes our sin and cast them into the sea of his forgetfulness to never remember them again. He nails them to the cross. He said, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord of my soul. There's hope. Why is there hope? We just came through Easter. We just came through Resurrection Day. That's where our hope is. Because he lives we can face tomorrow. This is the last verse that he writes. He says, uh, the hope of, re of seeing him one day is worth it all. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. He says here in the fifth verse, and Lord haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall sound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my Lord. Did you know that the Lord is coming? He's coming again. We need to have our sins nailed to the cross. The Lord says he would cast them in the sea of his forgetfulness, never to remember them no more. No more he's going to remember them. You know, people have this thing about wanting to bring up sins and throw them in your face. 
But when God forgives you, he forgets it. He's the only one that's able to do that. And this same Lord, Jesus Christ, who purchased our salvation, is coming again. He's coming again. I want to thank you for joining me tonight for just a little while. And we hope that uh, you're encouraged in the Lord. Don't let all the trouble that we're facing get you down. Remember that Jesus is alive. And if he's your savior tonight, if he has saved you, you're his. And nobody can take you out of his hands and out of his protection. He's going to see you through. I want to say uh, to my people, if you're listening, and I hope you are, if you're listening, I miss every one of you. I, I sit sometimes and, and, and ponder. I look out across the congregation. I know where every one of you sit. I know the smiles on your face. I know how much of encouragement you've been to me over the years. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for that. Someday soon we'll get back together. By the grace of God, we will. So look, until next time, uh, this is Pastor Clint saying have a good day. May God richly bless you. Mm -hmm.